Greetings, weary wanderer, and welcome back to another edition of Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week, we are playing Queenless by Croker RPGs. Now, before we dive into this, couple disclosures. First of all, sorry for missing last week. We had some technical difficulties. I think we've worked through them, so hopefully this will go on without a hitch. As for the second disclosure, Croker is a good friend of the podcast. He and I are members of the League of Incredible Soloists, a fun little group that we have with some other great names in solo literature to include Eric from Drakenspire and PTFO, as well as Tavon over on Thunderfang. Basically, just a couple of us trying to get together and help promote each other provide a little bit of advice, ideas, stuff to bounce off back and forth. So, yes, while my reviews are always positive, this one is definitely going to be more positive. As this is a friend, I did help out with some of the some of the idea generation. I was a sounding board and I've been excited about this game for a hot minute, so I am super excited to dive on in. Our queen is dead. Such sorrow and despair. Without our queen, our hive, our home will surely perish. Our only hope, our only slim hope, is to find, beg, borrow, and steal enough royal jelly from our neighbors. If we have enough royal jelly, maybe, just maybe, we can raise another queen. All right, so the point of this game is you play as a bee in search of royal jelly, and you must search the valley in order to find some. There will be friends and there will be enemies along the way in order to help out or hinder you and your quest. So to play this game, you're going to need a standard deck of cards, two six-sided dice, a notebook, index cards or random slips of paper, and some sort of token. To start the game, make sure you have a couple of hours of spare time ahead of you. Shuffle and place your story deck on a flat surface and gather your dice. When creating your bee, choose your bee's name and preferred pronouns. Your bee has three approaches, forceful, patient, and quick. Assign plus two to one, plus one to another, and the third will have zero. Your goal, your hive is in danger, your queen has died, and without a queen, the hive will surely and slowly perish. The hive looks to you to recover six jars of royal jelly, which can be used to raise a new queen. Each jar of jelly is held by one of six creatures in the valley. Some are friends and some of enemies. Some jars you'll be able to ask for, some you'll have to barter for, but others you'll have to fight for. So actions guide your journey across the valley. Each one is a self-contained system which helps you resolve the questions you have or the actions you want to take. When making an action, go through the following. Draw two cards from your story deck. Roll and sum your two action dice. Add any modifiers to your roll to get your score. Then interpret the result as follows and discard the cards. If your score is higher than both cards, you are in bloom. If your score is higher than one card, you are budding. Otherwise, you wither. Now for this, aces are worth 1, jacks 11, queens 12, and kings 13. Each action is formatted actions plus modifier and tells you what happens when you are in bloom, budding, or wither. For the gameplay loop, as a solo game, you have no GM to develop the story. Instead, you will use your own creativity, actions, and oracles that will build the story and drive you forward on the quest. The gameplay is generally meant to be played as a loop. First, discover a region, finding whatever is there. Then, engage with the region, its dangers and boons. If you find a fellow creature, you may engage with them in a positive conversation to barter, or if you must, to fight. Finally, once you've explored the region sufficiently, you will discover a region and start the loop again. Continue the gameplay loop until you have found all jars of royal jelly. Save your hive, little bee. For exploring the valley, when you start the game, draw a card from the story deck and place it face up. This is your hive and where you are right now. As you explore, add more cards to your valley map, each card being a new region. To know whether the region you're adding is located below, beside, or above your current location, compare the numbers of both cards and interpret the result. 
If the new cart is higher than your current location, place it above. If it is lower, place it below. Otherwise, place it on one of the sides. Use rolling tables for inspiration. Place slips of paper on top of the cards to note down details about the region. Now, as we've said, you need to find six jars of royal jelly in order for your hive to survive and thrive once again. Each is being held by a creature. To find these creatures, discover a region. If the card you add to the map is a face card, jack, king, or queen, that region includes one of these six creatures below. Creatures of the Valley will be discovered in the listed order. So first, you will find ants, which are friends. Next, you will find the ladybird, which is a foe. Then dragonflies, which are friends. Then praying mantis, which is a foe. Then the beetle, which is a friend. Then the sparrow, which is a foe. While the valley is a beautiful place home to many insects, some are kindly friends, others may wish you harm. When you discover a region and add a card to your map, if that card is an ace or a two, roll 2d6s on the insecta table and add both totals together to determine what insects you find. And this has a lovely list of different insects you might find, both friendly and not that you can interact with, as well as some lovely flavor text on it as well to help guide you in that interaction. Resting in fatigue. You may have to mark fatigue as a result of an action. When your fatigue is full or your story deck is empty, you will have to rest or flee to live another day or risk becoming too exhausted to continue. When you rest, fly back to the hive and fill an entry in your journey book. Shuffle the cards you discarded when making actions in your journey and clear your fatigue. Treasures. What is treasure to a bee? Honey and friendship. But other insects like things like grains, fungi, and nectar. Treasures can be used to barter with other insects for items, information, or favors. For certain insects like ants or caterpillars, best to come with treasure in hand. Now, through your travels, you may find yourself confronting a creature which holds a jar of royal jelly. Build a stack of cards, build a stack of cards as described in the fight a creature action. When the number of cards in the stack matches the creature's strength, they are overcome. If you flee from a creature, their stack resets and you must start from the beginning when you face that creature again. And then it also lists how many cards you need to build for each of the particular foes that you have ladybird being eight cards mantis being eight and the sparrow being 13 however with these some of the suits do count as two cards in the stack so a nice way to get a two for one benefit so various actions you can do all right you can confront risk when in the face of physical emotional or social adversity that will be action plus approach if you are in bloom that is a full success if you are budding a partial and if you wither it is a setback and you need to mark one fatigue searching for treasure will be action plus approach again bloom two treasures budding one treasure wither fatigue barter trading for knowledge or items decide on a number of treasures to expend and roll action plus treasures Bloom, you get exactly what you're looking for. Budding, you get partial information or offered another deal. Withered, you get ambiguous information or your deal is declined. Discover a region. When you look for a new path, roll action plus approach. Upon Bloom, add two cards to your map. Budding, add either one of the cards you draw to your map. And wither, the path is hidden add either one of the cards to your map face down and mark one fatigue to reveal the hidden path you may barter or confront risk fighting a creature is action plus approach and you're going to continue to repeat this until you've stacked enough cards to match the creature's strength so upon bloom stack two cards on the creature budding stack either one of the cards on the creature and wither you must evade danger to evade danger it is action plus approach Upon bloom, you avoid the danger. Budding, mark one fatigue. Wither, mark two fatigue. And then getting an answer from the oracle. When you want answers to a yes-no question, 
Roll action plus two if likely or plus zero if unlikely. Otherwise, roll action plus one. Upon bloom, the answer is yes and, budding yes but, and wither no and. Finally, you do have some lovely tables to help out with your actions and regions, as well as themes and events. So if you need any help, there are some beautiful tables there to help you out. So without further ado, let us go ahead and dive on into our gameplay. So I've already taken the liberty of filling out my character sheet. I will be playing Buzz Buzzington. He, him. Now, I know that we need to get this hive back as quickly as possible. So I took my plus two in quick. When I cannot be fast, I'm going to attempt to be forceful because this is an emergency. So that is going to be my plus one. And unfortunately, that makes my patience plus zero. So first things first, let's go ahead and get our hive. That is unfortunate that we pulled a queen right off the bat. I mean, that's amusing. It is amusing that though the queen is dead, the hive is a queen. So let us go ahead and draw two more cards. This will be our this will be our discover region. All right, so once again for discover a region, when you look for a new path, roll action plus approach. So we're going to be traveling quickly. We're going to be traveling quickly. So that's going to be 2d6 plus 2. As we speed away, we got 9. All right. So technically, technically the rules say higher. So we don't have a meets or beats situation, which means that I am in wither. So upon wither, the path is hidden. Add either one of the cards to your map face down and mark one fatigue. We're going to roll a D2. We're going to roll one D2 to determine which card I'm keeping. Because I want to keep that queen because I know that there's royal jelly there. Now, this is not explicitly in the rules. Of course, I, I got a one, which is the nine. So I'm keeping the nine. The nine is below queen, my hive. So that's going to go below. Now I can either confront risk or barter in order to attempt to find that path. We are not going to do that right now. We're just going to attempt to discover a new path. But I am going to mark my one fatigue thus far. All right. So we are off to a strong start. Maybe being quick is not the most beneficial. Unfortunately, we don't have time to learn rules or to learn valuable life lessons. So let us discover a new path. And we will once again be traveling quick. All right, we got an 11, which is higher than both, which is higher than both. So that means I get to keep both cards. Unfortunately, they are below the queen. So these would both have to go below. Actually, this is what we're going to do. We're going to slide that over there. And then we're going to just do this with these guys. And we'll say that I have two regions that I can explore. So starting off with, starting off with the seven. Starting off with the seven, let's see, what should we do? We are going, or, well, first of all, let's get a description of our region. So that is a, that's 2d6, rolling 2d6. And we got 40, or we got four and two. So four and two is a tomato patch. How very apropos, we had a red card. It's a seven of diamonds and we got a tomato patch. That's lovely. Let's see. So let's go ahead and search for treasure in this tomato patch. And we're going to be a little patient. We're going to be a little patient as we search this tomato patch. As we need, we, we know we need tradable goods. We know we're going to need something to trade. Unfortunately, that two, or that two and four makes six. And my lowest card was a six. So that has me in wither. Luckily for searching for treasure that is only marking one fatigue so we're gonna go ahead and mark our one fatigue i'm gonna search for treasure one last time this time i'm gonna be forceful i'm a little angry that my patient or my patient search has done nothing except make me tired luckily there's an ace on the board so i'm going to find something this time so i rolled six total 
I rolled six total. Like I said, there is an ace on the board. So I do find one treasure. Hooray for me. As my treasure seeking is budding. So I think we're going to move on down to the three. We're going to continue south. And what type of region is this? What type of region are we in three? 16. Flowers. All right. Sounds like exactly the type of region I want to be in. Now, I've already searched for treasure. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do here. So let's go ahead and roll on act on the action table. And I got 31. Impress. Impress. All right. So we're in a flower patch. We are trying to impress somebody. I'm going to say that as we're buzzing around this flower patch that we come across a butterfly. Because why not? Why not? We can do that. So... We come across a butterfly and we want to try and impress this butterfly. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to try to impress it with our quick flight. We're definitely going to have ourselves a little flight of the bubble bee moment. All right. I accidentally discarded that card. That's fine. We'll flip over a new one. And we got a 10. So we are in bloom. We are in bloom. So we definitely impress this butterfly and we're going to call this a, we're going to call part of that impressing. It's part of that impressing. We will say that we are bartering for information about this unknown region, about this unknown region. And so we are trying to find out about the unknown region. The butterfly is thoroughly impressed and tells us about it. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and see what the region is. Five, two, it is a trail. So yeah, the butterfly tells us about this trail that we can find and warns us that, warns us that this trail is not to be lightly tread. This is, this is a, it's a well-worn trail. It's a well-worn game trail. So like it's popular with the birds. It's popular with the spiders. Plenty of places for a poor little insect to be caught up in. But if, if one can successfully navigate the trail, then there is definitely there is definitely a prize at the end of that tunnel. But the butterfly will not go into more detail about what that prize is. So we will go ahead and fly up to this trail. And we are going to confront danger. We are going to confront danger by attempting to fly quickly through the trail. Oh, I barely need to roll. All right, so I rolled an 11, but I drew a two and a three. All right, so I definitely, I definitely succeed in this. I am definitely in bloom on this confront danger or confront risk. So I have a full success as I travel through this trail. Let's see what the uh, let's see what we get for theme so we can try to determine the type of reward. It's a four three. Redemption. Redemption. Hmm. What type of reward would be redemption? How does this trail how does the reward at this trail help redeem our little bee? Well, we know the redemption is at the end of the trail, so that would be a new region. So let's go ahead and draw a new region. Let's go ahead and draw a new region and we will continue on with our quick roll, which is a total of a seven. I drew an ace and a two. That means I get to place both of those. But the unfortunate thing about ace and two is the fact that those make me roll on the insecta table. So I still haven't quite figured out any redemption. So... All right, so first of all, let's move to the two. Let's roll on our region to find out what area that we're in. One, one, leafs. We're in a leafy region. And then let's find out what insecta we discover. Eight, which is the spider. The spider. Beware the spider's web. If you're caught, you have little chance. Well, that's encouraging. I don't see how that's very redemptive. 
So I'm going to say we either have to confront risk or evade danger on this. We are going to evade danger quickly. All right. That's not looking good for us. I drew a five and an eight and I rolled a six. So mark one fatigue. So it looks like I evade the danger, but I need to mark one fatigue. And I'm currently at three out of five fatigue. All right, let's travel down to the ace and see what we find there. First, rolling our region, we got five, two, which is going to be another trail. Maybe the redemption is at the end of this entire thing because we went from a trail to leaves to another trail. It seems like this leafy region was part of the trail. So maybe we have not finished trans uh, traversing the trail that the butterfly spoke of. But let us go ahead and roll to see what type of insecta we come across. And that is another spider's web. It seems that our it seems that our redemption is very far away indeed. So we are once again going to evade danger. Now this one is not looking good for the home team. We are going to evade quickly. I drew a jack and a nine. So I need to beat a nine. Preferably I need to beat an 11. Oh, I got a 13. Outstanding. I successfully evaded the danger as I quickly, as I quickly make my way to a new region. So let us discover our new region. Continuing on this trail, hopefully we find our redemption at the end. I drew a 7 and 2. I got a 13. So these cards are, so the 7 will go above, the 2 will go below as our valley is starting to look like we're getting little switchbacks in it. All right, so what do we have in the seven region? Four, six, four, six. Wheat, wheat. And I'm actually gonna search for gold, or I'm gonna search for treasure here because I do not have, I do not have a lot. I am not getting a lot. So I'm gonna do a quick search for treasure Unfortunately, I pulled a 10 and a king, so I need to at least beat a 10. And I do it. I do it. I got 13. So that beats a 10. I find one more piece of treasure in this wheat field. Unfortunately, I keep drawing all my face cards on random stuff and not in my discover regions. Highly annoying. I drew one and I lost it like a fool. And these are definitely the things that I'm thinking as I am transitioning down this valley, moving down from the seven to the two. Let's see what new region we have here. 36 ferns. Oh, this is a two. So I also need to roll for my insecta. Six. Yay. It is not another spider. Huzzah. Ah, six is a butterfly. Beautiful butterfly floats through life with little care for others. So let's go ahead and say this is the same butterfly that we saw in the flowers. After all, it's a butterfly. It can it can transition over, over the hills and whatnot that would be separating these regions. And I don't know what I want to do with this. Yeah, I'm not sure what I want to do with this because this is a friendly creature. But it is not like, it is not like it can help me find anything. So let's roll on the event table and see what we get there. Maybe that might help trigger something. One, two. Redeem. So redeem. It does not help. Like, I, I, honestly, I think I'm going to confront this thing. I'm going to confront this butterfly. And... I'm a little annoyed, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw some story cards here. We'll figure out what this is after it happens. But yeah, I'm going to confront this thing. It is going to be forceful because I am miffed. I pulled a three and a two. I rolled a four. So I am in bloom during this confrontation. As I am I am angry. After all. You told me to head down this trail, that this trail would have a reward at the end. My hive is literally dying, and all that's happened is I've run into two spiders. 
I've kept going down this trail. So like, what is like, what was this treasure? And, and the butterfly is going to look at me and flutter away. Not like far, like it's not running away. It's just going to flutter out of reach from where I'm at and make some cryptic comment about redemption. And of course, I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means because like the only redemption that I can possibly think of right now is finding some of that royal jelly and saving my hive, redeeming my hive. But we're going to say that this, we're going to say that this frustrates Buzz so much that Buzz is actually going to return to the hive. Buzz is going to return to the hive and he is going to take a rest. He's going to return to the hive. He's going to take a rest. That's going to clear my three fatigues. And I think while I'm resting that that redemption we're going to realize is for me. I was so quick to try and save the hive that I didn't stop and think about I didn't stop and think about what I would find in the valley. And that's probably why that's probably why I missed the ants the first go around. And so this whole, this whole redemptive journey is more a process of trying to learn that while being quick is an asset, I don't need to make it my defining trait. After all, I did do quite well with the butterfly without being quick. So I don't need to make quickness my defining trait and I don't need to make quick judgments, quick actions. I don't need to make quick decisions that it's okay to pause in the face of a complex problem and really think about what it is I need to do and find the right path forward. Because again, after all, I was so quick to try and do what I thought I needed to do that I missed the answer right up front. I jumped at the first opportunity for a quote unquote treasure or reward. And that led to me almost dying twice. So yeah, take a pause, take a breath. Yes, there is an emergency, but deliberate thought out action is going to be much better than snap decisions based on hunches and no information. But that's where we're going to call it for tonight. That is Queenless by Croker. So this is a this is a delightful little game. It really is. It really is. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. As far as as far as map builders go, great. Like, because essentially that's what it is. You're building the map to this valley. You're building the map to this valley. Yes, you have the yes, you have the goal of finding the royal jelly. But at the end of the day, it's not like that is not the important piece to the gameplay. If it was, then if it was, then there would be a way to make the odds of discovering, make the odds of discovering a jelly site easier. I mean, and I got it. I got it. You have a 12 and 52 chance. All right. Because you got three cards from four suits that could possibly find it. And if any one of those cards come up during, but that's the thing. One of those cards has to come up during this discover region. And then you have to succeed in your discover region. And you have to not be a silly goose like I was and roll for it. And instead, choose to keep that card when you wither. So, you know, again, if finding if finding the jelly was the actual goal of the game, there would be a way to there would be a way to make that easier to find, easier to happen on the stage that you need it to happen on. Because I mean, how many times did I have? How many times did I have a face card come up during? one of my action phases. You know, it happened a lot. 
Yeah, in seven rounds, I had four face cards, and only one of them was only one of them was possible for only one of them was possible for a region. So, you know, especially if you're especially if you're actually drawing drawing cards and doing the doing the roll off every time or multiple times in a region, like that just increases the likelihood that you're going to get a face card. So yeah, if, if finding jelly was the actual goal, then there would be a way to, there'd be a way to put a face card somewhere on the table and it could be face down. It can be face down. Like I'm not saying it has to be a region you can just waltz on into. That is absolutely fine. But you know, the concept of the concept of bartering for information on a region or bartering for information on a region or confronting risk before entering an unknown region, you know, it'd work a lot better if you, if that was going to be a region you wanted to go to because there's jelly there. But yeah, no, I mean, outside of that, like I said, this is a, this is a map building game. The whole point of this is to build your valley and playing it that way very cute a lot of a lot of interesting things that you can do a lot of interesting valleys that you can create through this that is that is quite fun and quite delightful now i really do like the mechanics the mechanics are great i love these mechanics the concept of the concept of rolling a dice versus a card draw is you know something i haven't seen in you know something i haven't seen yet like there are a lot of there are a lot of draw cards to get prompts. There are a lot of games where you can have cards and dice integrated with each other, but never where they're the opposition to each other. So having that very nice, really loved that bit. So mechanics great, tone whimsical. This is this is a wonderful, wonderful game. And if you felt the same way, you can find Queenless on both Itch and Drive Through RPG. I will have the links to both of those below, so make sure you go check those out. Choose whichever one your preference is. However, if you want an easy way to help out the channel, click on the drive through link because I will get like three cents if you decide to pick up your own copy of Queensless through that link. That's right, affiliate marketing through drive through So check it out. Honestly, I really don't care which, which site you pick it up from. But go pick it up. It's only five bucks. This is a great game. Really fun. Really, really whimsical. And I think that you'll have a lot of fun building your own valley with it. So go check it out. And if you do, make sure you tell them that Steel Stash sent you. And remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. This has been a Black Dragon Dungeon Company production. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. If you want to help us grow, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button and go ahead and leave us a comment down below and share this with your friends. Other ways you can help support the show is by checking out some of our products over on itch.io or drive through RPGs. In addition, you can join our Patreon and get early release access and a chance to ask us any questions that you have. If you want to reach out to us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at BDDC underscore pod, or you can email us at blackdragondungeoncompany at gmail.com. Once again, thanks for watching.